Thank you. Uh, first, uh, for the nice words and the uh, opportunity here to be able to share the Dutch uh, oil industry's view. Uh, I think it's in particular very good that we uh, um, are able to, uh, uh, to share the industry view around the North Sea as, uh, as one on one team and that people understand that we, it, it, it's very serious for all of us. We can, um, in the Netherlands, look back to a uh, <coughs> very good legislative processes on, on directives in the past. Um, I think the 92-91 and the framework directive, uh, as mentioned uh, previously, have been doing good things for us. Um, and for us, well, things which are going okay, you should not change them too easily. A little bit uh, back on history. Um, and uh, we had a good, uh, and still have a very good cooperation with uh, state supervision of mines. And uh, that's for a long term already. Nogepa itself is there uh, a little bit over uh, 40 years, and uh, the Dutch state supervision is a little bit longer there. They are around 1810, which means uh, there is some experience there. Um, <coughs> not only that, that, that law is still in place. There's another thing which has been interesting uh, for those who are a little bit xenophobic against uh, good things from abroad. Napoleon uh, at that moment was in occupation of the Netherlands, and he changed some things for the good, and some of the things from abroad were so good that we still have them. Um, which means we are not automatically against things from abroad, and EU, EU is part of that, I think. Um, I think the, um, after Piper Alpha, we accepted the Netherlands the safety case regimes, um, and I think that worked out well. Uh, if we look at the uh, uh, Macondo, uh, story I think we had together with the industry some 14 points uh, of action defined together also with the, with the government and I think at this moment we are uh, closing it out the last point actually there's a live ex exercise today showing that we have things reasonably in place it's, uh, together with Shell and next week there is another uh, <coughs> exercise following up and then I think after two years we have more or less uh, learned our lessons from Piper Alpha and, no, and uh, Macondo. Um, but things do not change. Uh, the total Elgin uh, incident was mentioned. Also based on that, has been letters sent around. We are continuously learning. And I think that is the important thing. Do it in the, in the proper way. The, <coughs> the continuous dialogue with the government, <coughs> uh, I think, is, is very um, much needed. We do that uh, as an industry every three months anyway, and that is, means the unions are there, and it's also it's the uh, delivering uh, companies which are part of the UCOA uh, here in the UK, but in the Netherlands it's the IRO. Why do we do that? Uh, it's a mutual benefit. You've got uh, the, the same big goals, of course, because you want to have uh, safety improvements and effectiveness, but if you challenge each other's uh, positions and processes, I think, uh, you balance these things out. And I think that is, uh, I think, what's happening. Um, Overregulation is not only a thing of cost, what we quite often see, um, because it's also, it diverts your thinking. And I think that is the, the problem, I think, what we have also with this uh, approach on regulation now, is um, it diverts from things which were arranged and taken for granted towards things uh, well, yeah, where we really should pay attention to. So, in the Netherlands, um, the official position of the Dutch government is against a regulation. Um, although, uh, in the Netherlands we are a little bit pragmatic, and that means that uh, we call it quite often the polder model, which means we always speak with each other, which means the government tells we are content orientated and we can live both with a regulation and a directive. Um, okay. Well, everybody's allowed to have his uh, opinion. Uh, we are in favor of a directive. And <coughs> um, in this uh, discussion, um, we spoke with state supervision of mines, and uh, we said all these things are changing. Every article we took through, the pity, uh, and the good thing was we found a lot of things, a lot of arguments, but that was prior, I think, uh, uh, the end of March and early April, and um, then they got a revised... Uh, set of articles, which took a lot of our ammunition away. But it was very good. Um, State Supervision said, 
nothing will change for you. We'll put that on black and white on paper and we'll give you that study. And we expect that soon when we restart our dialogue again. We are in favor of a uh, directive. Um, what I mentioned, because things were very um, um, clear for us, it, it worked out reasonably well, and also I think directives give you the possibility um, to award the cultural differences what you have. Uh, we have legislative systems in place which developed uh, for over many years, I think in the UK it's over a thousand years, isn't it? Something like that, and it, it means why should you change on those type of things and not embed things and award um, all those things what you learned in your history um, if it has is not adding anything. So the, um, we also believe that uh, if, if you look at the mature area, what the Dutch, uh, um, let's say the uh, uh, offshore industry works on. We know a lot about geology. We know a lot about how things work. And it's very easy to go in over-regulation in, in the processes. That means that it will have negative effects for the situation on safety levels, but also even on economic levels. That means some of the wells will not be drilled anymore because it's just too expensive. Um, we can see that there are political long-term goals. And they are important because if you do not have long-term views, I think it's it's not a good management thing. Uh, but negative uh, effects, like uh, we think uh, destroying what we have, uh, the, let's say the 96% of the oil and gas industry in, in Europe is around the North Sea, and we are reasonably okay. You should not destroy that for 4% somewhere in the Mediterranean. Uh, we, all, we do not believe either that having a regulation in place uh, will solve the problems there. I think it's a little bit naive if you have a regulation that things will be solved. Um, so, with my drilling background, uh, I know that in areas where there was no legislative system in place which gave enough regulation, usually the operator and the drilling contractor worked together and sorted out things themselves. And I think if you have a strong regulator who wants also to participate and has that role also from society, things will only go better if you cooperate together and do what fits with the three of you. And I think that's a little bit lacking in this European process now. Um, we also have stakeholders in the, in the Netherlands. It's, it's not very often, I think, that it's the first time, I think, in the NOGEPA history that we asked uh, the unions to participate in, in this. Uh, we published a uh, position paper, and two unions, they uh, said, yeah, we, we agree with this because it's not good for our people. The other participators were the IRO and, of course, ourselves. We sent um, uh, this position paper to Brussels, to the people sending proposals to us. Um, we got a reply back, uh, very polite and, and detailed, I can tell you, but no new views or no changes for us. In closing again, uh, we believe in uh, continuous improvement of HSE, uh, that we need to work together on these things. Um, that tailor-made uh, area-specific solutions are necessary, and you can only do that uh, with a directive. And we also believe that we as an industry should support the government in, in, in these processes, and with the two of us, and of course also the unions, uh, we will get good arrangements in place. And uh, that's why I believe, uh, positive things, that uh, well, a directive is still possible, and if we go on high, uh, high levels on the main topics, that will help us. The other stuff will be sorted out later. Thank you very much.